So the day has finally come. It's upgrade day for my computer system. I'm still rocking the i7-3770 in my computer, and I have finally gotten an X99 upgrade. Let's go and take a look what's all in the box. Before I dig into the box, I just want to say one thing. All of this hardware was purchased by me and not supplied or sponsored by anybody. After all, I'm still a small channel, so it's a fat chance of that happening anytime soon. So, let's go and take a look. Okay, the first thing that I got is a Kraken X61. This is an all-in-one water cooler by NZXT. Now, I got this because, actually I was on the fence between the Corsair H105i and this one, and after reading a few reviews and talking to some uh, people on social media, it seemed like this one was a little bit better at keeping it cool. So, I went ahead and just went with this one. I think it was a little bit more expensive than the Corsair, but uh, it still should be pretty good. All right, looks like we have a generic box. I think this is a hard drive. Double check real quick. Okay, so this is a four terabyte Western Digital Red Drive. I have plenty of these, but well, I need more because 4K uh, data or 4K video takes a lot of space. So. Okay, Samson SSD 850 Evo, not the Pro, the Evo. The reason why I got this is I plan on taking the old hardware out of my system, the i7-3770, at least the core components that I'm upgrading today, and I'm going to transfer that over to a, like a really old, I think it's a thermal take case, and I'm going to make a standalone Plex media server. Now, I'll make a video about that, I'll have more details on what I'm going to do and what I plan on doing with that, but this is going to serve as the boot drive, and it was on sale for $89 with a $15 discount for buying the Western Digital Drive, so I got this for pretty cheap. Uh, it's 250 gigabytes, so it's going to give me plenty of space. I mean, SSDs have just gotten so much cheaper. It's kind of crazy. Ah, oh, yes. 64 gigabytes DDR4 2800 RAM brought to you by G-Skill. I know I don't need 64 gigabytes. You know, there's a lot of things I know I don't need, but does that mean I don't want it? No, not so much. I always run into a situation where I'm working with large project files in Premiere and my 16 gigabytes is just destroyed when it comes to RAM usage that I have currently. So I figured if I'm gonna go and fill all of my slots with RAM and I'm gonna spend the kind of money that DDR4 costs in order to get said RAM, that it's probably not gonna be upgraded anytime soon. So in the future, if I wanted to go to 64 for maybe 32 gigabytes, if I ever did need it, I don't ever see, my, see myself doing that just because it'd be an expensive upgrade to start all over. So I just went ahead and said screw it, went with the total balls to the wall, maxing out the amount of uh, memory that I could fit on the motherboard, which I will show you here in a little bit, and just say it can't hurt anything. Just stick that right there. Oh, yeah! EVGA 1000 watt power supply. This is going to replace my 850 watt Roswell power supply. Now, again, this goes into me building a new computer out of my old hardware in my old case for Plex to run on standalone. See, I've been running Plex off my main PC because that outgrew my super old hardware, We're running a Q660, uh, which is okay, but when I'm using my computer for production, that means I don't really want anyone else taking any resources from me. So. I got this to replace the, the power supply I have now. Even though the 850 could more than handle uh, everything that I'm about to throw at it, I still want to be able to, one, be on a safe side, two, this is way more power efficient than what I have in my system, and it's newer. It's not like eight years old like my Roswell is. Uh, and three, I want to be able to move the old one over to Plex. So 1,000 watts, fully modular. Uh, plenty of plenty of cables that I need. I mean, it's it's a it's a power supply. The thing I liked about it is it was cheaper than the AX1200 that I was looking at, um, and it has a seven-year warranty. I don't know what the the AX1 or 1200 has, but it's a pretty good warranty on it. So there's that. Here it is, the brains of the computer. I went ahead 
and said, screw it. I went with the 5960X. I had to. You know, I was looking at it and it was $500 more, I think, or $400 more than the six core, but you know, I'm upgrading this, I'm spending a lot of money, and I figured, why not? Just get the best. It's gonna last you a lot longer, and for what I use my computer for, for production and Premiere and stuff like that, uh, I'm gonna really enjoy those extra cores when I'm really trying to crunch through some videos. So, especially now that I'm working with 4K, my old i7-3770 just really can't keep up. So, I said screw it, I went with the 5960. I know it's overpriced, but sometimes you just you just gotta go with the best. And here it is, the base of the computer, brought to you by ASRock. This is an X99 Workstation Extended motherboard. Now this motherboard I picked for, well, a few reasons actually. I, I read a lot of reviews. Now, this is not the most expensive motherboard out there. I found other motherboards. I think there was one that was called the Godlike motherboard that, you know, cost like $150 more, maybe $200 more. But when I was balancing the different features that it offers and the things that I didn't use versus what I wanted, I just, I felt that this was the best that I could buy uh, with my money. Even if, if something would have been more expensive, I might have gotten it, but this was the best that I could buy. So let me tell you why. Uh, it has 12 SATA ports. Now, you can't use them all if you want to use an M.2 drive, which this does handle, but it still has 12 SATA ports if I never get an M.2. However, I want to get an M.2, I want to get the 950 Pro, but you know, I gotta wait for that to come out and get more money now. So it has seven PCI Express times 16 slots, and it's a workstation class motherboard. It handles the X99 platform, the i7s, but it also handles Xeon processors, E5s, I think 2600 series. So when I try to build it, when I can, when I build a new computer, I try to build not only the computer that I want at the moment, but I also try to plan for the computer that I'm going to want later on. So for this particular motherboard, this one is going to uh, support up to 128 gigabytes of RAM, and it, it supports ECC RAM. However, the ECC RAM only works if you have a server class CPU like the Xeon. But since this supports both of them, that means before I actually turn this into a server, for after I do my next upgrade, you know, four or five years down the line, I will be able to, if I wanted to, put memory in here that's error correcting, maybe run FreeNAS or some sort of uh, um, a standalone network attached storage software. I haven't decided on that one yet. Um, it will give me plenty of hard drive expandability with 12 SATA ports, plenty of PCI sl uh, slots if I want to hook up more than that. I mean, this thing is going to be on a workstation server level if I need it. But for now, it's gonna give me everything I need. Plenty of RAM, plenty of PCI slots, give me an M.2 expandability, so for when the Samsung 950 Pro comes out and I can afford it, I will put that in here as well. Um, there was a more expensive version of this board that had a 10 gigabit connection to it, but I don't even have anything even close to a 10 gigabit connection running through my house, so it doesn't really matter. I don't even have an internal 10 gigabit uh, router or cables or anything. I mean, I'm not even close to even being prepared for that. So since I'm that's so far in the future of me even needing, this is good enough for me. <sighs> now that I got everything taken out of the new egg box, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some B-roll. So I'm going to take these things out of the box, get some nice footage of it, expect some reviews later on. This video here will probably come out first. Then after I get the B-roll, I'm going to rip apart my computer and I'm gonna start building. It's definitely gonna be a nerdy night for me. So expect the video for this one to come out before any of the hardware video that I'm gonna shoot later on, mainly because I wanna have some, uh, some time to run through here, um, do a solid review based off of the experience that I found with each one of these components, or at least the ones that I think are worth reviewing. So time to start unboxing.
So there we have it. I'm done building it. Here's the NZXT standalone water cooler. I was able to get this overclocked to five, I'm sorry, 4.5 gigahertz stable. I think at 1.36 volts. It stays right around 32 degrees, give or take Celsius. And when it's on full load underneath testing or rendering, it can spike to about 75 degrees. Um, but usually it hovers right around 71 degrees. I definitely need to get some extra lights in my system because, well, it's pretty dark in here. Although it's kind of low priority for me because, well, I don't have a side cover. I just have the Cosmos 2 case and I can't really look at it unless I open it up. So it's kind of a low priority for me. Now I did show kind of two different scenes and when I was building it, the first one had all of my bigger hard drives in it. The second one, I actually took out all of those hard drives and I put those in my now standalone Plex Media server that is sitting over there. And that is not nearly as nice inside, but that's okay. I don't need it to look pretty. I just need it to work, which it does. Hi kitty. Meow. Meow. Anyways. So I do kind of have a mess here I need to clean up and I am working on some networking issues that I had since I added this server. I only had one uh, gigabit LAN coming into this room and this other cable was actually an old cable I had that was going to the printer over there and it's only 100 megabits. So I hooked this one up to my computer just because 100 megabits is fine enough for me and I need this one to have a gigabit connection for a couple different reasons, but I do have new wires and a new network switch coming in the mail. It should be here tomorrow, so that will be an upgrade to my system overall. So overall, definitely happy about it. I'm gonna do a full review on this motherboard and how it works really well with this CPU and how this cooler works. This RGB lighting that this NZXT thing has is pretty awesome. I was looking at their Hue Plus um, RGB lighting kit that they have for cases. I emailed them about it and they said that, well, I have too small of a channel for them to care about me, but one of these days, maybe I'll be big enough to get something like that for review. Here you go. As always, guys, thank you for watching. Have a good day.